Hi, and welcome to another episode in the 15 minute AI series. Today we're looking at a tool called Klein. Klein is an open source AI coding tool. It allows us to, using prompts, create whole programs or sections of programs, functions in multiple different languages. It uses a large language model at the back. Today we'll look at how to install this, where to install this, how to configure it to use a large language model, because it does still require that at the back end, and we'll create an application from scratch, a very simple application. Um, plus, I'll also take you through creating a slightly more advanced one later on, and I'll also provide a link in the comments to a, another episode I did, not part of the 15 minutes series, but one that went into a lot more detail and takes you through the whole process of developing a far more sophisticated application using Klein. So first thing, if we look at, this is the Klein GitHub page. This is available at github.com slash Klein slash Klein. We can scroll down here. Gives us lots of details. Gives us also different places to install this from, but I'll show you um, a very the easiest way to actually install this. Let's scroll back up here. Let's see what it actually says Klein does or is. So according to this, Klein is an autonomous coding agent right in your IDE, capable of creating, editing files, executing commands, even using the browser, and more. So let's have a look at what we can actually do with this. So let's go over to our Visual Studio Code IDE. <coughs> this is Klein already installed. But to install it, if you go to the Extensions tab, and we can do a search for Klein. You can click on Klein and the install button here should be enabled. At the moment it says uninstall because I've currently have it installed. We just get rid of that. We go back to our Klein button. So this is the button, the new button on the left hand side here. We can click on that and it takes us back to the Klein tool. For configuration we click on this gears and we can configure several important piece of information. The most important is the large language model we'll actually be using. Now there are lots of different configuration options. I'm actually using OpenRouter but I'm still using the Anthropic Sonnet model. Now this has been shown to be one of the best models certainly for coding. So we're going to continue on with that. So we just click on done down here, this is where the prompts go in. This is what we can do. So we can start straight away. So let's write me a to-do application in one file. I hit enter, or when I hit enter, this will start to actually create the code straight away. Prior to that, I'm going to click on this here. So this gives you several other options, whether you allow a client to automatically edit files, save files, use the browser. I have all these enabled at the moment because I'm quite happy with um, what it's going to do. But if you're less certain, let's say, and you also want to know as you're going through which files are being touched, um, what the changes are, you can actually review all those and you can actually approve each action that client undertakes as you go along. So let's click on the button there and straight away that request has been sent off to the large language model along with a large system prompt. So you can actually view the large system prompt on the client GitHub page, but we're not going to be going into that detail now. As you can see on the screen, it's generating the code now in a file called index.html. So it's done that. If we look across here, it's now going on to another action. So it's actually opened up that page and it's testing it now. So it's actually open on that page in a browser. It's testing it. It's quite happy. That looks at things, what's been created. It's now going on to step three of three. And actually it's adding in another item there by looks in buy groceries. There you go. So Klein is actually testing the application. It's clicking on the buttons. And it's actually, I believe, deleting now or completing. So actually it's added additional steps now. 
we can go through, we can read those. It's now completed that task as far as it's concerned. What it's allowing us to do, we can actually open up the file and we can actually test it ourselves. So let's just open that up. Here it is. So let's try testing the application. So let's just say create video. We add that. We mark it as completed. It strikes it through. We can delete it. Let's add another task. I enter. There we go. And let's add a second task. That's great. Perfect. I can complete those or undo that. I can delete them. It's not bad for a minute or so, but it's not great. So let's look at what else we can do. So remember, my prompt was very, very simple and straightforward. I've got a slightly longer prompt here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just disregard that. We'll go back into Visual Studio Code. I'm actually going to go up to here. I'm going to delete this. We don't have to delete this. We can actually um, have it update as we go along. But I want to start again from the fresh. So we're going to delete that. Go back to Climb. We'll start a new task. I'm going to paste this prompt here. This is a much longer prompt, but again, it's for a to-do list. But it specifies design preferences and functionality, etc. Now, one of the things I will do, I will add this large prompt into the description so you can actually try it for yourself so let's go ahead with that let's click that and once again that request has been sent off it's now processing that understanding it and it's now creating again the file interesting to see the difference because i've given it quite clear get guidelines on um, the functionality and the design that i want from this Oh, it should be nearing completion now, I think. There we go. That's completed. It should go through some of the same tasks it went through last time. So it should hopefully, there we go, bring up in the browser. There we go. It looks a bit, a bit different. It's actually called it the elegant to-do list. Which is great. We can go through here. It's adding tasks. Actually, even from that small window, it does look much nicer. So we're going to let it complete out there. Before we do that, we're going to stop that for a minute. So it's going on. There we go. So it's done the browser actions. It's now completed the task. It should ask me again if I want to open it. I shall. I'm going to open that up and let's switch over. Here we go. So this looks much nicer. I did specify lots of different things. So let's have a look. Let's call this task one. Add that. Let's do task two. Task two. Uh, in some sort of order as well. If I check that, it marks it's completed. If I check that, it deletes it. Um, let's try one other thing I specified as well. So let's add another task here. Let's do task. I'll do task one again. Add that. But actually, I want these in different order. So hopefully, there we go. I've got drag and drop functionality in there as well. Complete that. It's quite nice. There we go. So great. But actually, it doesn't look that great still. So one other thing you can do. With in fact, when I say one other, it's just one of the many things. Let me show you. So let's have a look. So these are different color palettes. I quite like this one here. So let's just copy that image. In fact, so let's copy. In fact, it's not an image. So what I'll do is I'll do print screen. I'm just going to copy that. Okay, that's copied. We go back to Visual Studio Code. And we go back down into here. I'm going to paste that directly in there, that image. I'm going to say update 
the application to use the attached color palette. So it's now going through the code base. Well, I hope it will do in a minute. It's actually picked out the colors. It's now modifying the code directly. So if you see another website with a particularly pleasant color palette or scheme, you can actually take a copy of it and you can paste it directly into this and you can have the same color scheme. Well, let's hope so. So leave that for a, a few more seconds and we should be completed. So it's completed the coding part. Now it's looking at running it itself. So certainly I can see already from the small browser which is being displayed in the, the Klein extension window that it looks very different. I'm interested to see how this looks live so I'm actually going to go back I'm not going to I'm gonna let that as that's completing in fact I'm going to go back and have a look at the larger window so go back to elegant so this is what it used to look like I do a refresh now here we go actually that does look let's have a look task free that's not bad at all let's see if drag and drop still works perfect strike through it's great delete perfect there we go much better so this has been a very quick and a look at client and some of the functionality that's available in client as mentioned I do have a much more extensive um, example which actually builds a, a React application using, in fact, it builds a RAG application which uses um, a vector database and many other items. And there'll be a link to that in the description. I hope you enjoyed that. And um, there's no reason not to go ahead and actually start experimenting and playing with Klein. Even if it's creating small applications such as this or for tools that you might be using or you might want to use. So thank you very much. And um, I'll see you next time.